Welcome back to the Citizen Channel. I hope you're all staying safe and well. We have a match preview today as we look forward. Let's get back. Let's get back on a winning run, eh, guys? We look forward to a trip to Goodison Park. It was never usually an easy place to go. It's been slightly easier recently, so we'll, uh, let's hope we can do the business. 26th of February, 2022, 5.30pm kickoff, which are never good, are they, guys? Those 5.30pm kickoff. So we're going to have a little preview. Match day 27 for City. So we're getting there. We're getting there, guys. Let, let's, <laughs> let's, 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 let's win the games, are we? Um, we'll have a look, of course, at Everton and their current form and their new manager, of course. Of course, I'm trying to predict our starting eleven. The match is being shown on Sky Sports Main Event and Sky Sports Premier League. So I'm not able to get a ticket for this one as at this point in time. So uh, I will be trying to watch it where, where I can. Please, if you are new to the channel, please push that subscribe button, push the bell notification. All these vlogs are coming out, trying to inform and entertain on Manchester City, past, present and forever, of course, with history vlogs and uh, present vlogs as well. And if you get a chance, if you bit, bit well, have a rest from football, which we do, I love films and TVs, you know. So I do a lot of film and TV stuff as well. So check that out if you can. That'd be great to see you over there. And please, thumbs ups, guys. If you can give us a thumbs up, we get, you know, get plenty of, uh, try and get, and get 20, try and get 20 at least. We can get up to 30. So let's get at least 20, 30 thumbs up if, if, if we can, guys, for this. Hope you, pre hope you enjoy what I try and put out there anyway. Right, who's in charge? Well, we've got Mr. Paul Turney. 41 years old, he's 41 years young, isn't he? He's just a whippersnapper. And this is his 121st top flight game. He's refereed 24 games so far this season, showing a total of 91 yellow cards and one red card. So, yeah, a little bit. Seeing as we're supposed to be toning down on the cards, I must admit the refs are sort of edging up a little bit again now, aren't they, after the early season where they didn't, didn't want to give too many. And it's turned his fifth match in Balding City. He's ref the likes of City against Leicester, Liverpool, and of course a 7 0 win against Leeds United. We'll take that, guys, won't we? His Lionels, Lee Betts, and Stuart Burt. And Stockley Park, yes, we've got Mr. Chris Kavanagh. on the old uh, on the old joy pad at Stockley Park there with his assistant making the coffee. Referee Gary Bezik. Gary Bezik, yeah, I don't think he's ref many games. Fourth official, well, <coughs> excuse me. I think he's a regular these days as fourth official at Martin Atkinson. Previous meetings, of course, last time at Goodison Park was uh, it was a de delayed game, postponed game, wasn't it? From 28th of December 20th. Remember that all the uproar there was because City had a game postponed because of COVID, eh? The shock and horror of it. And never no other team got the amount of stick we got, let's be honest about it. Uh of course it was replayed on the 17th of February 2021. Fold and goal, yeah, was equalised before half time by Richarlison, but uh, we went through the gears in the second half, and Mares and Bernardo put the game beyond Everton to take City ten points clear of United at the top of the Premier League after twenty four games. Hey, happy days! Overall record at their place, yeah, we played eighty eight in the league. This is league games, one twenty two. Uh, not not one of our most favourite places, drawn 23 so that's 45, so over half, one and drawn, so that's not too bad, and we lost 43, we scored 100 goals and let in 151, so let's increase that, and please check out my little History Boys feature I look back at a game between City and Everton on the 11th of March 1972 yeah, top of the table City visiting a mid-table Everton at the time, and see how that went out, but please check out my History Boys feature on that one and the odds to win the match please when the fun stops stop i don't condone gambling in any way but obviously the odds to win this match the bookies are generally two to seven on for city a draw is five to one and everton you get 11 to one at corals i think most bookies are about 10 to one but if you fancy an everton win if you're an everton fan uh, that's uh, generally 10 to one you can get the odd 11 to one and please check out as i said i don't condone gambling but please check out my little Odd show feature on this game as well, which features the charity bets for this week. And let's keep on topping up the, the charity bets uh, as best we can. So if you can check that out as well, if it's of any interest, let me know what you're having a little flutter on. That'll be great. How will it pan out? Well, let's see. Ex City legend, of course. I always say that because it riles the Chelsea fans because they don't have much of a sense of humour at Chelsea, do they? Ex City legend Frank Lampard. No easy task, of course, rescuing Everton's season. They're not down amongst the dead men, but obviously they were, when he came in, he was sort of struggling, and they've not improved much since, to be honest with you. He's 6 16 at the moment, as I'm recording this, and they've only won one of their last five league games. 
with four defeats as well. I mean, not even picking up points, you know, and get the odd draw would help, wasn't it? But at least their, their win was a home game, so that bowled's well, reasonably well for this one. It was a 3-0 win against Leeds, and even United can beat Leeds, so uh, perhaps not so good as as we think. Uh, will they just roll over knowing a City loss, uh, a, City, a loss against City will land a, a slight advantage, title advantage over to, to over to us from their horrible neighbours, Liverpool? Probably not Catting L's chance, guys. <laughs> That's not going to happen. City will have to go in there and show more fight and composure than we did against Spurs, that's for sure, which let's hope was just a bad day at the office for City and we'll, we'll carry on regardless. Everton after the City match have a, a fairly easy home tie in the FA Cup fifth round. They go they play Boreham Woods. What a great what a great game. Boreham Wood, great for Boreham Wood of course. But as far as ever concerned, it's a league that matters. And they're next away games after that in the league after City's game and the Boreham Wood game. They're away at Spurs home against Wolves, home against Newcastle and away against Watford. Then they have West Ham away and United at home. So even if they don't get anything from us, if they can beat Wolves, Watford and Newcastle, possible, and get something from Spurs, it will look a whole lot brighter by the time they go to West Ham for the first game of April. And by the time they play the bogey team, let's face it, they very rarely beat United these days, do they? And the time they play their bogey team, it may not look so bad after all for Everton, but they will have to get a few wins, uh, hopefully after us, though. That's that's the thing. I think they'll stay up. I think they'll show spirit. I think Frank Lampard's probably got the character to, to give them that, and I think uh, is Ferguson's still there and uh, uh, knocking around as as well. Is it Ferguson? Yeah, I can't remember his name now. The other guy who t- took over temporary charge. Uh, yeah, so with Frank Lampard, I think they've got a lot of character. I think he's he, he can he's able to sort of pass his character traits on onto Everton. And I think they should just be able to be okay. As I say, they've got enough. They've got points in the bag at the moment. It's not they're not on, in amongst the dead men, but uh, it, they will have to pick pick up points in the games following the City game, obviously. So I think they will be okay. But uh, obviously, hopefully, just after this City game, they start picking up points and not against us. As far as us, so City concerned, yeah, we've got to bounce back from the Spurs game. Pep said we played well. We didn't, did we? We know we know we didn't play well. Pep knows we didn't play well, but he's he's got to say that. And there was a lack of awareness, I thought, about our players in that game. A bit, a lot of naivety for a game. Uh, you know, a team with such such experience. Uh, you know, it would sort of seemed to lack naivety what was going around, going on around us defensively and defensively as well. Not just defensively, offensively. There was a lot of lack of awareness and a lot. Of, bit of panic of shoving things into the box time and time again you know it wasn't working well let's let's carry on rather than try something else which is when you know City aren't quite firing when they're doing things like that and defensively as I said uh, looking at the looking at the stats I did with Charlie on uh, his dugout daily I mean it was shocking it was like four little points of ever of Tottenham Tottenham uh, if you like attacking four points and that was the four goals basically if you include the offside one as well so it was really shocking from City it, well it wasn't great at all so we played well said Pep well we all know that's not true but some people are panicking I'm not panicking uh, asking for wholesale changes to the team starting Aki and Stones at the back it brings Zinchenko in that shows how desperate we're getting but obviously that's not Pep, Pep's way and to be honest he doesn't he doesn't have the squad depth at the moment to do that anyway and and why should he? These players have, have, have done very, very well for us and they will want to get out there and put their reputations back intact. I mean, they will, after one defeat, that's, that's how pathetic that is really, isn't it? They, you know, they have to sort of fight for their reputation when we've just been beaten once. But uh, yeah, no, I'm not having that. There's not going to be wholesale changes in this team. That's That's for sure. He's got to rely on the guys who most of the time have done the business for us. Definite starts for me this week. I would say Edison, definitely. I can't, you can't say Edison was at fault for anything. Even Walker, all right, I'll forgive him that last minute. Kane goal, I mean, Kane, Kane is a cracking player when he's, when he's on form. Not often, but obviously, you know, you can't really say. Walker had a go, he just wasn't big enough and he got bullied. Simple as that. So Walker, I would say, is a definite start. Cancelo, probably, because of, of Cancelo's Cancelo. Stones has got to be, surely, guys. Stones has got to have a few games under his belt now, unless there's something going on that we don't know about. Of course, Bernardo, KDB and Maris for me, are all definite starters. As I'm doing this vlog, obviously, there's still doubts about Palmer, Grealish and Jesus. So uh, I think there's some good news on Jesus. 
and Grealish is a bit, uh, it's one of these niggles again, isn't it, with Grealish? But uh, I want to see Jesus back. I've not seen him for ages. He, he seems to be the forgotten man, doesn't he, because of injury. Uh, but we want, want to see him backfiring, don't we? And there's obviously still a doubt over those three players. But uh, I'm not going to throw, I don't think you'd throw any of those in anyway to the starting 11. So my 11 for the Everton game, let me know what you think, guys. Well, let me know what you think as your starting 11. Edison Walker, Diaz, Stones, Cancelo. Rodri, Gundogan, Bernardo, KDB, Mares, and Sterling. I mean, would he put further in there? I say Rodri didn't have the greatest game, but the way the way to recover from not having a great game is playing the next game and playing well, isn't it? But uh, I can't see Fern again in there, but it is a possibility. And for me up front, Bernardo, KDB, Sterling can switch around for me all they want around this false nine thing. Let's face it, it's not having a false nine, but have we really got a player who's good at it at the moment? <laughs> that's a problem it's not having a false nine but we need someone who's good at doing it and at the moment they're all a bit much of the same as the guys he's trying unfortunately and we're losing their skills in other parts of the field Pep knows best doesn't he that's the Pep's a genius I'm sure he'll sort it out let me know what you think guys anyway tactic wise and that team wise whether you agree with it and any changes you'd make uh, say it's all opinions uh, hope I've got my opinion everyone else has got their opinion so please, please let me know what you think guys yeah, quirky stats before we sort of finish this vlog. Taken from gold.com, so my thanks to them. I mean, you probably have to see, I've seen the stats other places as well, but that's just a general place I've took them from. City have won each of their last four away Premier League games against Everton. Let's hope it make it five. As many as they had in their first 20 visits to Goodison Park in the competition. So we've won four, drawn five and lost 11. I say we've done very, very well recently. Fingers crossed we can continue that. Everton have lost their last eight league games against City, only against Portsmouth, 13, between 1947 and 1956. And United, nine, between 99 and 2004. Have they ever lost more consecutive in their league history? Let's hope we, are, we equal the United one with this one. No side has scored fewer first-half goals in the Premier League than Everton, just eight. Just 29% of the Toffees goals this term coming before the interval, eight out of 28. City have scored more first-half goals, 30, and second-half goals, 33, than Everton having total this term with just the 28, as we said. City manager Pep has won 24 of his last 25 Premier League games against English managers since a 2-1 loss to Frank Lampard's Chelsea in June 2020. There you go, he's got another chance, Frank, haven't you? The only exception in this run was a 3-2 loss, of course, against Graham Potter's Brighton in May last season. Although we put that right this season, didn't we? After scoring all three of Everton's Premier League games in August, Dominic Calvert-Lewin has failed to find the net in any of his five appearances since returning from injury in January. Perhaps he's probably finding his feet, despite playing the full 90 minutes in four of those five games. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's one of those stats where, yeah, it's probably time for him to score now, isn't it? Uh, since the start of November, Ryan still has scored 12 goals in 18 appearances in all competitions for City. His previous 12 goals for the club came across a 58-game spell between October 20 and October 2021. Let's hope he, he carries on with this sort of form. City's Riyad Mahrez has been involved in 25 goals in 30 appearances in all competitions this season, scoring 18 and assisting 7 in his career in English football, only 2015-16 with 18 goals, 11 assists, and 2019-20 with 13 goals, 13 assists, as he registered more goal involvement in a single campaign. It's not over yet, is it? So hopefully Riyad can add a few more to that. So there we go. My thanks for those quirky stats, please. I will try and attempt to get this out, uh, the match report out on Saturday evening, but obviously time scales involved. It may be Sunday morning. So keep that notification button pressed so you know when the match report comes out. Hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, guys, on a good win for City. And please, as I said, uh, if it's not Saturday night, I will have it out Sunday morning. And please don't forget to check out my other two features and give them your support and give me your support that'd be wonderful to see you on there giving us those thumbs ups and uh, pressing those buttons and don't forget to check out those two features the history boys say back in 1972 when i even i was a sort of springish chicken at that time and the odd show as well and let, so i've got three charity bets this week guys so hopefully you keep your fingers crossed that we can add more to the charity pot let me know. Let me know what you think, guys. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great rest day. Have a great one. Look after yourselves. Look after your friends. Look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. So we'll meet here again on the Citizen Channel. I only ask one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.